Hello, I'm Michael Dean from the National Cancer Institute, and me and Nicole Rossi are going to tell you about our work on the analysis of human papillomavirus integration sites in cervical cancer using long read sequencing technology. Cervical cancer is an international tragedy as this preventable disease kills nearly a thousand women every day. The vast majority of these women live in poverty, living in uh, one of the lower middle income countries. In fact, the most significant risk factor for dying of cervical cancer is living in a country where the average income is below two or $3,000. Now, within every country, there are health disparities. And so 5,000 women die in the US of this preventable disease. And African-American women in their 60s have three to four times the incidence of the general population. To study cervical cancer in a low income country, we established a cohort in Guatemala and recruited over 700 women collecting blood, tumor tissue, and clinical data. Unfortunately, we found that nearly all of these women have advanced cancer that cannot be treated surgically. The standard of care in the US would be to treat with chemo radiation and targeted agents. However, there are insufficient radiotherapy facilities in Guatemala and no access to targeted agents. The most disturbing thing we learned is that these women have an average of six children apiece. Therefore, the social impact of the disease is enormous. Luckily, this uh, pushed the country of Guatemala to initiate a vaccination campaign, and so girls are being vaccinated now in Guatemala. Cervical cancer is caused almost exclusively by high-risk types of human papillomavirus, such as HPV-16. These types are sexually transmitted, very prevalent and infectious, and so nearly everyone acquires at least one infection in their lifetime, but without any symptoms. Most infections are cleared by the immune system within a year. However, women with persistent infections have a risk of precancer in their 20s and cancer in their 30s and 40s. The most effective primary prevention is obviously the HPV vaccine. Uh, there's also the pap smear, obviously, which has been used for many years. The problem with the pap smear is it's not real sensitive and needs to be delivered multiple times in a woman's lifetime. It's also a complicated test and positive women have to come back to the clinic for a biopsy and then back again if the biopsy is positive for treatment. And this system really doesn't work in most low and middle income countries. So international organizations are pushing for HPV testing of women. The World Health Organization has a plan to eliminate cervical cancer around the world over the next 30 years by promoting vaccination, treatment for all women and effective screening. The National Cancer Institute wants to accelerate this 30 year timeline. And so for example, we're working with the Gates Foundation uh, to carry out a clinical trial to see if one dose of the vaccine is sufficient for girls. And we're now expanding that trial to women up to age 30. My lab has developed and tested HPV assays and delivered them to countries in Latin America. Mark Schiffman and colleagues have shown that deep learning analysis of cervical images can detect cervical precancer this device from Mobile ODT in Israel uh, is one of the devices we're evaluating. And the idea would be in a single visit, one could examine a woman, get a diagnosis of precancer, and treat those affected women in the same visit. HPV is encoded by an eight kilobase double-stranded DNA genome, and it encodes two very powerful oncogenes, the E6 uh, gene, which inhibits P53, and E7, which inhibits RB1. HPV also co-ops the cell's homologous recombination system, causing those enzymes to be expressed outside their normal place in the cell cycle, leading to the accumulation of double-strand breaks. And this can promote the integration of HPV into the human genome. This is actually an error for the virus because integrated viruses cannot replicate, but it results in higher expression of E6 and in particular E7, uh, promoting transformation and can also inactivate or activate cellular genes. Why are we using long read sequencing technology? First of all, HPV integrations are complex. Akagi is, et al. has shown that there's often this uh, complex looping structure where HPV, uh, multiple copies of HPV get generated as well as copies of the flanking human DNA. Also, our lab has shown that the HLA class one genes are frequently mutated in cervical cancer. These genes are hard to align and call variants on using short read technology. 
and we don't know the extent of somatic uh, alterations, uh, structural variants in those genes. Lastly, HPV splicing is complex. There are multiple transcripts uh, producing different sets of proteins, and they have not been accurately quantitated. And finally, of course, our goal is to improve the understanding of cervical cancer, leading to improved diagnostics, prevention, and treatment strategies. To evaluate the application of long read technologies in cancer, we use the well-established cervical cancer cell lines, CIHA and CASCI. These cell lines have been studied by classical methods as well as short read sequencing. Both CASCI and CIHA are derived from squamous cell carcinomas, the dominant type of cervical cancer. Both cell lines also contain HPV-16, the most frequent HPV type causing cancer. CIHA has a single HPV integration locus, but with a complex structure. And CASCI has many sites of integration and unusual tandem arrays of HPV genomes that have never been resolved. CIHA DNA was extracted using a Gentra pure gene kit from Kyogen and shared to 12 to about 20 KB. A library was then constructed and loaded onto an Oxford nanopore, nanopore min-ion flow cell. Read lengths averaged over 14 KB and were as large as 100 KB. Sequence reads were then aligned to the human genome and to an HPV-16 reference genome using the Epi2Me program and human HPV junction reads were then identified. Here's an example of human HPV junction read. Human DNA is shown in blue and light blue, flanking the HPV sequence in red. This 17 KB read contains the entire sequence of an integrated HPV genome and flanking human DNA segments. As published, the HPV integration resulted in a complex looping rearrangement and duplication of HPV and host segments about 300 KB apart. So one method to carry out targeted sequencing is to use CRISPR to cut specific sites in the sequence and add adapters at those sites. The CRISPR cleaved ends are then preferentially taken up by nanopores. We designed probes to cut in each side of the human flanking DNA and inside the HPV E7 gene. As a control for our cutting, we used published probes flanking the TP53 gene. We got excellent enrichment and over 300 fold coverage of the TP53 locus. And here are the reads from the left HPV junction. Here we got equally efficient cutting. Soft clipping is turned on in IGV to show the HPV segments of the human HPV junction reads. We obtained 200 to 400 fold coverage of the human flanking DNA. And this is the right side of the CIHA integration site. And again, we got equally efficient cutting, generating several hundred fold coverage of both the human flanking sequence and the HPV sequence. We then aligned these reads to the CIHA HPV 16 sequence. As you can see, CRISPR cut efficiently inside the HPV 16 genome. Deep coverage shows that there's no sequence variation between the two integrated copies of HPV 16 and CIHA. In the future, we can use these probes to cut inside any HPV-16 positive tumor to study more integration events. To summarize, in CIHA cells, we validated the complex structure of this integration event. The deep coverage from the CRISPR enrichment showed that the duplicated human and HPV-16 segments are in fact identical. With this experience, we then tackled the far more complicated CASCI cell line with up to 800 copies of HPV over 40 genomic locations. We built a sheared library with 12 KB average size and an unsheared library with 30 KB average length. We obtained over 800,000 long reads with over 2,000 of these reads containing HPV-16 and a total of 168 had HPV human junction reads. The human segments were then mapped to specific sites in the human, ge human genome using a BLAT program and the HPV segments were aligned and characterized using BLAST. Baker et al. published in 1987 that CASCI cells contain hundreds of copies of both full-length 7.9 KB genomes, shown here as genome A, and a truncated 6.5 KB version of, G of HPV-16 designated genome B. These genomes are in blocks of DNA of unknown size and structure. Our long read sequences allow these structures to be viewed for the very first time, and we can see both complex arrays of the full-length and the truncated HPV-16 genomes. Even with our long reads, we never sequenced all the way through the entire tandem HPV insert to reach the human DNA on the other side. We have HPV only reads, 
of up to 100 KB completely internal to these long rays. So we will need even longer reads if we're going to completely resolve these structures. Akagi et al. used 30X short read whole genome sequencing and PCR validation to describe 44 HPV integration sites in Caskey cells. We confirmed 31 of those sites shown in yellow and pink are sites that we did not detect, but Akagi did. However, we also identified reads at 31 additional sites shown in green, including integrations at several new chromosomal locations. The human flanking DNA is often in the centromere or repetitive DNA sequence, which presents a challenge for short read methods. We were then crazy enough to cut inside Caskey DNA and the 800 copies of HPV16 integrated using our CRISPR probes. This resulted in an amazing 44% of sequence reads containing HPV16. A total of 180 of these reads have human HPV junction fragments. We confirmed many of the junctions seen by Akagi and our whole genome sequencing data, but we found at least one other read at another nine sites. In conclusion, the long read methods allow the resolution of both single copy HPV integration events, such as those in SIHA, as well as much more complex structures, such as those in Caskey cells. We are now ready to tackle the tumors obtained from the patients in Guatemala in order to learn more details about this horrible disease. One of the things that still mystifies us is the HPV superspreading phenotype seen in Caskey cells. So how does the same viral sequence integrate in so many loci and form complex arrays of viral genomes? Many of the new integration loci that we found are supported by only one to two reads. So could these be artifacts? However, we don't think that they are as the protocol that we follow has no amplification step and only one ligation step in order to add sequencing adapters. Besides, many of our new sites are clustered near existing sites, so they're not very random. We did try PCR to validate some of these new, sli, new loci and it did fail. However, what we think is happening is that new rearrangements and integrations are continuing to occur constantly in the cells that are growing in culture. And we are finding these integration events that are in a small population of cells. Great, thanks, Nicole. Uh, now I'm gonna focus on our application of long read transcriptome analysis to the same two cell lines. HPV transcripts are initiated one of two promoters and eight different proteins are produced from a complex set of transcripts. Uh, often a single transcript can produce multiple proteins. Full length transcripts would allow us to better understand and, and quantify these different products. We isolated CIHA total RNA and then poly A plus RNA and used the direct cDNA sequencing kit and amplification free protocol. We obtained 20, 220,000 total reads, 12 of which contain HPV. The CI integration site has deleted the HPV splice acceptor in the E2 gene region. We can see that the transcripts start at the P97 promoter, often splice out a portion of E6 and then splice into cryptic splice acceptors at one of two different locations in the human genome. Our experience with CIHA allowed us to optimize the protocol and with Caskey poly A plus RNA, we obtained 2.4 million reads, 1.3 million of which passed stringent quality control and we obtained 1600 HPV containing transcripts. Nearly a thousand of those transcripts also contain human DNA uh, but we were astonished to see that nearly all of those contain the same 90 base pair segment of chromosome six. That is, even though Caskey has 50 to 100 sites in the genome where HPV is integrated, only one of those sites is transcriptionally active. This site has retained the splice acceptor site in E2, and so splicing occurs into that site, continuing into the flanking human DNA, uh, and then polyadenylation occurs. By mapping all of these HPV containing transcripts, we're able to determine the structure of these full link transcripts starting at the P97 promoter and going to the poly A site. To our knowledge, this is the first time that this has been accomplished in an HPV positive cell line. These transcripts are all predicted to produce the E7 oncoprotein, and most of them produce a truncated form of E6, and only a minor 1% would be predicted to produce full length E6. This is actually in agreement with work by Seedorf et al. in 1987, where they showed that by far E7 is the most abundant protein in these cells. Now the transcribed locus on chromosome six in Caskey cells is upstream of a gene that's very interesting to us 
RUNX2. We've recently shown that the RUNX family transcription factors are important in the regulation of the HPV16 promoter binding to a novel enhancer promoter site that we have described. From our transcriptome data of CASCI, CHA, and an HPV negative cervical cancer line, C33A, we see that RUNX2 is expressed only in CASCI cells and RUNX1 and 3 ex uh, almost exclusively in the HPV positive cell lines. It is likely that during the integration, the HPV enhancer is activating RUNX2 and CASCI cells, further promoting HPV gene expression. We recently found this preprint by you et al confirming with standard transcriptome sequencing that only the chromosome six locus in CASCI is transcribed in agreement with our results. In conclusion, we are excited that both the long read DNA and RNA methods are working well in cancer cell lines and generating data that's consistent with what is known as well as providing new insight into HPV integration and expression. We now have a panel of 15 additional cell lines of both cervical and HPV positive head and neck cancers containing five different HPV types uh, that we are now going to study. We are anxious to establish methylcytosine and hydroxymethylcytosine analysis so that we can look at epigenetics and we plan to use Hi-C and other chromatin capture methods to study the three-dimensional organization of these cell lines. As a mentor, the most exciting part about our adventure in long read DNA sequencing is having the sequencer in the lab. A student like Nicole can grow cells, isolate DNA, RNA, build libraries, load flow cells, and see the data coming out in real time and analyze it. This permits learning of the student by doing the entire process and can lead to students then coming up with experiments that their PIs never would have dreamed of. Lastly, I'd like to challenge the Nanopore community to come with it up with an HPV test in the two to $3 price range. This is essential to allow the screening of HPV for the one to two billion women in the world who lack HPV screening. Chan et al has published a comprehensive sequencing test using the Nanopore for HPV that costs about $50 a sample. This is actually competitive with current commercial tests. I estimate that to convert a test like that to a flongal with current pricing, which gets you down to about $20 a sample. So we only have one log more in reduction of price to get to, to, get to the two to $3 range. Here's the team, uh, Hong Lu grew the cells, Yi Shea uh, produced uh, libraries and, uh, and loaded flow cells. Nicole carried out DNA extraction, PCR gels, loaded the flongal and helped with data analysis. And uh, I've been running the sequencer, doing data processing and data analysis as well. Thank you very much.